Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to test out the use of Raptor engines on the Shinkansen space plane in place of its normal ED4 engines. My expectation is that the Raptor engines are going to be much more efficient, partly because they have better specific impulse, but also partly because they are lighter and we need fewer of them. Uh, so the setup we have here is the carrier plane is going to have three and there is just going to be one really big Raptor vacuum engine on the space plane. Not necessarily the ideal situation, but uh, that is how it is. So it's a lot like the Lex, because Lex only has one Raptor vacuum engine as well. And we do still have ED4s in the form of the ED4 boosters. There are two ED4 boosters on the space plane, and that is because we do not want to light the vacuum engine at sea level. We could, it has sufficient um, chamber pressure in order to ensure that it won't have flow separation, I, I believe, uh, as far as I can tell, but it won't have very good efficiencies like 260 seconds ISP or something like that. So we'll still use the boosters, but we'll use two on this side to counterbalance the Raptors on this side initially, because the carrier plane is much heavier at the start. Uh, as usual, we'll have to turn off engines on this side and throw down the center one eventually in order to keep the balance. Uh, I have tried my best to tilt them properly, but it is tricky. Uh, fortunately, the Raptor engines do have a fair bit of gimbling in this case. Uh, the stats for the Raptor engines we should go through. Uh, I have them on the 2020 level, which is uh, probably already surpassed. Uh, two tons of mass each, 20,000, uh, sorry, 20,000, 2,060 uh, kilonewtons in vacuum, 358.8 seconds ISP. And similarly, the vacuum engine is also set to the oldest possible one. 2.4 tons is what I have as the mass, 20, uh, 2,065 kilonewtons, about 375 seconds ISP. So... Fairly conservative. Now, admittedly, the tanks had to be redone a little bit. In other words, the fuel mixture for the Raptors is not the same as the fuel mixture for the ED4. But since they were always going to be uh, common bulkhead tanks, uh, it doesn't really matter. You just move the bulkhead. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the nose tanks, the ones for the RCS, remain the same. Those have not changed. So, with this setup, let's see how it works. We are going to use Smart ASS for control. The KOS script for Shinkansen as it is would not be quite right. And I don't know exactly when to switch off engines. I'll just have to feel that out. I'm pinning the center engine so that I can use the thrust limiter here to throttle it down. I could also use this engine groups controller as another option. I've action grouped the outer engines to shut them down as necessary. So again, we are only we are not lighting the Raptor vacuum engine yet. We'll do that once the boosters are out or are close to it. We'll spin it up. SAS on throttle. Actually, let's just have this hold uh, 90 degrees and pitch 90 at the start. So ignition and launch. No, execute. Straighten up. Okay, it seems to be straightening it up quicker than KOS actually. You can see we're only starting at 334 seconds ISP right now. This actually has more thrust off the pad, I believe, than the ED4 version. And if we go with the higher quality configs on the Raptor engines, it'd be even better. Though I don't know how much stress we want, it would put a lot of stress on the airframes. So, keeping an eye on how much pitch authority we're going to be using in order to decide what to do about it. And also, waiting for the boosters to almost run out to start the vacuum engine. My expectation is we're going to end up in orbit with more than, say, 400, 500 meters per second, which is what we got with the ED4s. Okay, lighting. 
and separation. Okay, all good. For the carrier plane, the rear tank drains first to help keep the center of mass as far forward as possible. But ultimately it drifts back because the tank in the space plane remains full until separation. Because of the way everything is set up, it's very hard to figure out what the actual delta V is without testing it. So it's not possible to just look in the VAB and decide, oh yes, we have, we're have we going to have this much extra necessarily. There's a whole matter of switching the engines off and the cross-feeding that's happening. Well, Pitch Authority is getting pretty far in there. And our thrust weight ratio is going up too. Okay, switching off the outer engines. Oh, our time to apoapsis is going down. Let's pitch up a little bit. Well, we might as well just put it to a minimum. And off. Okay. So now it is just a space plane. Touchy business, but doable. Three minutes and 30-ish seconds left here. We don't need too much time to apoapsis, this, but we do need to get to space, so yeah, that's important. Right now our apoapsis is not in space. We should... we don't need to activate the OMS engines, which are still ED1s, but let's get the RCS active and roll around, why don't we? Very, very slowly, since this doesn't have very good roll authority on the RCS. So yes, yeah, so why I envision uh, doing is, instead of having all these clipped in tanks, actually have the nose section be one thing, one part, have the body up to the back of the cargo be a separate part, and then the rear bit be another part. That might be difficult to do mesh-wise. Um, I might just need to remodel the whole thing from scratch or maybe I can separate it off. There are issues like right around here is a lot of issues with the mesh because I put the cargo bay in afterwards. A little bit of lack of planning there. We don't even need the extendable nozzle on the Raptor. Of course it's tucked in a little bit so it is a little bit cheating but actually uh, I think the tanks give some room for that because there's two tanks side by side in here. So there might be some room for the engine to actually be tucked in there. Well, alright, a little bit lopsided, but 375 by 180. We have 750 meters per second left here. So this obviously can carry more payload. But, I mean, it's not revolutionary or anything, but we weren't expecting that much more. Uh, so, yep, the benefit of the Raptor engines, about 300 meters per second more once we get to orbit. And that would translate into more payload. So, that's that's basically the test. Nothing too complicated here. This is the Shinkansen with Raptor engines. There you have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.